On the 18th of August, 1913, there was a stir in the Casino de Monte Carlo in Monaco. A crowd had gathered around the roulette table. Each time, as the wheel slowed to a stop, you could hear more and more audible gasps from the onlookers. In the end, the ball landed on black 26 times in a row. But as the streak had gone on, millions of francs were lost as gamblers became convinced that it would end on the next roll. This belief, the belief that unusual trends in completely independent events must somehow even out over time, has been given a name by mathematicians, the gambler's fallacy. A fallacy is a name given to a mistaken belief that is based on unsound reasoning. Now let's have a think about why those gamblers in Monte Carlo were wrong to think their chances of winning became higher as the black streak continued. A roulette wheel has 37 segments where the ball can land. 18 are red, 18 are black and one is green. Now assuming the wheel is fair, when you spin the wheel and drop the ball in, there is a 1 in 37 chance of the ball landing on any one of the segments of the wheel. Importantly though, spinning a roulette wheel is an independent event of chance. Regardless of what's happened before or what will happen after, the odds of a ball landing on any segment of a fair roulette wheel do not change. They will remain 1 in 37 no matter what. Now, people in that casino in Monte Carlo were struggling to believe that complete randomness could exist in the world. They mistakenly thought that the black streak they were experiencing meant the chances of rolling a red must have been higher than the 18 in 37 that they actually were. And the gambler's fallacy also exists as a phenomenon in football. There are plenty of examples of footballers talking about things that happen on the football field using something equivalent to gambler's fallacy as justification. Former England, Leicester City and Tottenham striker Gary Lineker chose not to shoot during pre-match warm-ups, claiming he didn't want to waste goals and use up his good stuff before the game. Harry Kane has also used gambler's fallacy-like logic when talking about his thought processes during matches. Speaking to The Telegraph in 2015, he said, Jermaine Defoe told me once, if I miss a chance, then the odds are now in my favour to score the next one, because the chances of missing two in a row are less than missing one. And that's why I try to take shots. If I miss, then the next one is more in my favour to score. Now, it's worth noting at this point that when it comes to footballers shooting, those aren't technically examples of the gambler's fallacy. As we saw in the case of the Monte Carlo example, the gambler's fallacy only applies in instances where the events being considered are casually unrelated to one another. When it comes to Harry Kane shooting, the odds of him scoring will change every time based on a myriad of factors, including the outcome of the previous shot. Where he's wrong is in stating categorically that the odds of scoring the next chance will always rise if he misses a shot. This is simply not true. Now, perhaps a purer example of the gambler's fallacy emerges during penalty shootouts. In an academic study carried out by researchers from University College London, they looked at keepers' dive patterns in all 37 penalty shootouts in World Cup and European Cup matches between 1976 and 2012. They noticed that after a ball had been aimed to one side, keepers were more likely to dive the other way for the next shot. And the odds increased if a second or third ball had gone to that same side. For example, after three balls had been directed to one side, goalkeepers directed more than 70% of their dives for the fourth the opposite way. Again, penalty kicks in a shootout are not completely casually unrelated. But goalkeepers here are clearly using gambler's fallacy logic to influence their decisions to dive in a different direction in the course of the proceedings. What's perhaps most interesting here is the psychological element. In the case of the striker shooting or the goalkeeper diving, the logical explanations given for these decisions are less interesting than the outcomes they produce. For Harry Kane, whether the gambler's fallacy is a fallacy or not is unimportant. What matters is that it gives him a foundation for believing that his next shot is more likely to result in a goal if he misses the last one. In these instances, the logic or lack of logic is immaterial. What matters is that it gives him the psychological edge when lining up that next shot. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic brings you the best sports journalism in the world in a personalized experience, connecting you with the stories and teams that you care about the most. There's coverage of 13 sports, plus direct access to world-class journalists through live Q&As, discussions and podcasts. Not to mention, it's all ad-free. 
and you can try it now for free for 30 days by clicking the link in the description.